Okay, so in this video, I'm attempting to show you how to do a lacy skip trowel texture using coarse sand material. Um, it's straight 16 mesh sand. Um, now, there's a couple of ways to do this. One, you could just use your trowel and put on a base coat. Or two, you can use uh, a, a sponge float to bring out the sand, which is what we're doing here, but why we're doing that is because that's how they did it on the existing home. So we're trying to match, we want to match and blend the texture as close as possible. So the way they did it originally was they used a sponge float to bring out the sand and then they did a lacy skip trowel texture over that. Now you can do it with just a trowel and you could get a really nice looking skip trowel texture. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you use a sand finish that it's going to be better. But I I think it's a little bit nicer texture. But I can also do a nice texture with just using a trowel um, and then you know knocking down all the heavy lines with the trowel and then putting on a skip uh, lacy skip trowel texture. But we're trying to blend the texture here, make it match as close as possible. So the way they did it was they used a green sponge float and floated the sand after they applied it uh, by hand and then went dropped back and uh, came back with some looser mud, a little bit looser. You can't use tight or stiff mud to try and get a lacy texture. It has to be a little looser. And it all depends on the weather, how long you let it let the base coat sit before you put the texture on. If it's a hot day, then you want to get on it right away. You don't want the base coat to get too dry. You want it to have a little bit of moisture in it when you come back to put the texture on. If the temperature is on the cooler side, then you want to wait until the stucco has had time to take up quite a bit. But you still want a little bit of moisture in it. You don't want to come back the next day and try to do uh, the texture then. I've seen some guys try to do that and it just doesn't work very well. Uh, um, especially if you're using color. You don't want to do that because then it'll be a different color. Um, we use color a lot but on this particular project it's getting painted and I like to do it. I like to have the uh, contractor come back and paint it or somebody else come back and paint it because um, actually lately we haven't had a lot of luck with the uh, paint samples that we're getting from the more reputable companies like Kelly Moore, Sherwin-Williams, even Home Depot. Uh, I don't know what it is, but they can never nail the paint. You have to paint from corner to corner. And so I just tell people that I just don't do it anymore. Get somebody else to paint it. Uh, painters have, the painting suppliers have made me look bad because the paint color has been coming out a different color. But it's better than uh, trying to match it with stucco. You know, you can get a closer match with paint than you can with um, stucco in most cases. So, I burned up uh, the rest of the mud with a base coat. Now I'm going to go mix a little bit more just to do the finish. But it's going to be so um, small of amount, I'm not going to use a drill this time. I'm just going to mix it by hand. So I've got a little bit of uh, water in the bottom of the bucket already and uh, we don't need to put glue in this coat. We had glue in the first coat uh, primarily because we were doing the foam too. When you do foam trim you want to have acrylic bonder in it um, and additive. You know something that you can add to the stucco. Um, you want it to be uh, the kind of bonder that you can add, an, an ad mix. You want to get the ad mix kind. Uh, you don't want to have to roll it on the wall. You just put it in the mix. But I found that if you're going to be doing big areas, that don't put it in the cement mixer because then your material will want to stick to the inside of your cement mixer and it will be hard to clean at the end of the day. So what we do is we just mix big batches of it without any glue. And then if we need glue in our mud, we uh, can mix it on the board or put it into a bucket full of mud and uh, sting it with a drill.
So I'm just getting all the lumps, the big lumps out now. This is a nice area here. These these homes are were built in about 2017. Now I'm just checking the material to see uh, if I got all the lumps out. And I got I got quite a bit of the lumps out. It came out pretty good. But it's just a little too stiff right now. We're gonna have to put more water in this and thin it down, thin it down a little bit and make it more spreadable. This would actually be okay for the base coat right here. But when you're doing a lacy skip trail texture. You want it looser, nice and creamy. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's what I always say. If you don't make a mess, then you don't have one to clean up. So we need to uh, add a little bit more water and get this to the right consistency for texturing. And the right consistency would be the texture of yogurt. Although this is coarse sand, so you're not going to find a yogurt with that's uh, that crunchy. But you kind of get the gist of it. It needs to be nice and creamy. Um, you could probably do a semi-smooth finish with yogurt. It would be edible. You could eat it. There. Now we're going to clean off our trowel. Get the back of the trowel nice and clean and the front of the trowel, the face. Yeah, I could eat off of that one. Yeah, let's not put that in with the, the good mud. All right, now we're going to try doing some texture finally. So the base coat has sit now for about six or seven minutes. And we're just going to put about uh, one scoop of mud on our hawk to start with, anyway. Yeah, stand your trowel up and then uh, gradually lay it down as you pull the trowel up the wall. Try to let the wall, try to let the stucco that's on the wall pull the mud off of your trowel. You don't need to push hard. You just barely touch the wall. And just let the wall pull the stucco off of your trowel. You're not going to lay it down right away. It depends on the temperature again. If it's really hot, you're going to want to knock it down right away. Well, you want it to take up a little bit. So it's going to depend on the temperature. This was a more cool day, so I probably did uh, mm, probably did about three, four feet up, and then went back and knocked it down. 
you want to look at the existing texture and remember you're going to have to match that so the timing has to be just right when you knock it down then you want to blend in with the existing you want to pull some of that texture in with the existing and then pay close attention to any high spots that are sticking out uh, right on that joint right there that's critical because you have to kind of foresee what it's going to look like after it's painted I just had to go out and do a 360, do a little dance and then get back in with it. Remember to get in tight to the edges. It depends on you know, what you're matching to. You know, if they didn't get in tight with the edge, then you don't get in tight with the edge. You can see that the existing texture on this house is very tight. Oh, that's a lot of mud. Kind of risking it on that one, but once you become accustomed to doing this type of a texture and confident, then you're okay with using a little bit more mud. So gently knock it down, nice and slow. Unless, of course, it's hot and you have to move a little faster. Just want it to look the same as the existing. Whatever they did, you have to emulate. See, I'm scraping anything heavy off of that joint right there. So that when it gets painted, you can't tell. You can't tell that there was a patch there. Barely. The untrained eye will not know that you did a stucco patch there. And it's kind of a big deal, you know. I might be a little bit too meticulous when it comes to this kind of stuff, but I'm not perfect either. So that's why I spend a little bit more time to do the best job I can, and that's going to be good enough. Here I am attempting to cover that light, but I pick up this piece of plastic and realize that it's got stucco on it. So you know what? I think I'll just be real careful and try not to get any mud on the light. Of course, I did get a little bit of mud on the light. If you watch my other video, I had to run out and get a rag and, uh, and clean off the light, but it was so minimal of amount. I, it was nothing big. This uh, texture here, when you pull the mud off a light, off your hawk like that, it's called a speed texture. That's a speed texture right there. Of course, I'm moving really slow, but just for reference, that's called a speed speed texture technique. I think everybody starts off taking the mud off of the back of the hawk. It took me a long time to learn how to do that, actually. To take it off of the front of the hawk like that. So, you can see that I just go back 
<clears throat> take a little bit of mud and fill in some voids. Any place where you have some voids, you could put a little bit more mud there. Just use the tip of your trowel, the corner of your trowel. I saw one guy doing this texture on one of those YouTube videos, and he was uh, he was doing that the whole job just to try and get a lacy uh, skip trowel texture. He was just dotting it every dot he put on there. It was taking him forever, and it didn't look good either. You can do this fast. I'm just trying to blend the texture and match exactly what he has there so it takes more time. But you can do this faster. When they did this texture originally, they did it fast. But this is an art. You know, we're trying to match somebody else's texture. This is where the art comes in. Okay, that about does it for this segment of Lacy Skip Trial Texture. If you have any comments or suggestions, or if you know a way to do this better, please leave it in the comments section down below. And stay tuned, because we're going to be coming up with some new videos on everything that has to do with stucco. And until then, try to find happiness in everything you say or do, and we'll see you next time.